Hi, I'm Thais, Technical Evangelist at Varnish Software. In this video, I'm going to show you how to leverage Quick Start to deploy Varnish Enterprise to Amazon Web Services. To get started with Varnish Enterprise in the cloud, simply go to our website to see the different cloud options. In this case, you'll choose Varnish Quick Start on AWS. By clicking this link, you'll be redirected to our dedicated web page on the AWS website. We do expect you to subscribe to the image on the Marketplace page in order to deploy. For your convenience, we've linked the exact URL to that page in the description below. It's also the place where you'll find product information and pricing information. There's even a free trial and the license cost is included in the hourly cost of the machine. After having subscribed to this image, you can go back to the Quick Start page and scroll down and select the How to Deploy tab. You can choose either to deploy in an existing VPC or select a new VPC. For the sake of this video, we'll go for an existing VPC. The Quick Start uses CloudFormation, AWS's cloud orchestration tool. We already injected an official Varnish Enterprise template that helps you preload all the options and values you need in the next steps of the wizard. The benefit of using our CloudFormation template is that it does more than just setting up servers. It also provides all infrastructure dependencies and pushes configuration to all the components in the stack. There's also guarantees in terms of availability, but also in terms of dynamic capacity needs. It's basically infrastructure as code, where all the complexities and all the configurations are condensed into a single file that is easy to distribute and easy to replay, and where all that complexity is abstracted away behind an easy to use wizard. There are a couple of assumptions, however, once you are ready to continue the quick start. The first one is the availability of a VPC that should be fully configured with multiple subnets available. The second assumption is that you should have already configured an SSH key pair. If you don't have those in place yet, don't worry, we added some links to the description below to point you in the right direction. In the next step, you configure the template details. You'll select your VPC and assign two subnets. You'll select the SSH key you'll use to connect to the Varnish servers when you're ready to customize their behavior. And you also choose the type of machine to deploy to and their corresponding dimensions. You'll select the EFS mount names and the mounting points, but for the time being, we'll keep these the default values. In the Varnish Enterprise Workload Nodes Configuration section, you'll define the amount of nodes you need to be spun up, what the operator email address is, and what the SSL certificate is you wish to use. The current SSL implementation leverages Hitch, the high-performance SSL and TLS proxy we developed. We expect you to store the certificates in AWS's Secrets Manager and reference the certificate through its secret key name. The default value is AWS No Value, which means no SSL certificate will be provisioned. The Quick Start doesn't yet support the AWS Certificate Manager, but the next release of our Quick Start will definitely support these native AWS certificates. For the time being, please import your certificates in the Secrets Manager. In the Varnish Software Configuration section, we'll configure backend and high availability properties. Please enter the IP address of your backend server or the IP address of the load balancer that sits in front of your backend servers. For the other values, we'll stick with the defaults. The next step of the wizard allows you to configure some extra options. Options such as tags, an IAM role, triggers and notifications. We'll not go into detail on those and skip to the next step. Before confirming the deployment, you'll have to acknowledge the fact that this template will create identity and access management resources by ticking the appropriate box in the capabilities section. All right, we're done and ready to create the stack, but please be patient because this might take some time. A lot of components are being created and behind the scenes, multiple servers will be started using the official Varnish Enterprise machine image. These servers will be managed in an auto-scaling group, configurations will be fetched and launch scripts will be pushed, a load balancer will be created and configured, high availability will be configured, and CloudWatch metrics and alerts will be provided. But let's just fast forward to the point of completion. In your overview of EC2 instances, you'll see two Varnish servers right next to your existing web servers. You can select its IP address and connect to it over SSH. Authentication happens using the SSH key you provided in the wizard. You can customize the behavior of the cache by writing VCL code.
The only thing you need to do now is change the DNS records of your domain and point them to the endpoint of the load balancer that was being created for you to make sure that Varnish will sit in front of your servers and cache your content. Don't forget, DNS changes might take some time before being globally propagated. If you go back to our website, the first request will still be slow because the response hasn't been cached yet. But as of the second request, the site will be blazing fast. Thanks for watching this video. For more information about Varnish Enterprise, please visit www.varnish-software.com.